Good afternoon. Hi, everybody in Facebook world. I am Jen Pillow White. Howdy, everybody. I hope you guys are all doing wonderful today. It's a beautiful day out there. Today would have been a much better uh, opportunity for me to uh, talk about grounding outside. It's gorgeous outside. Um, so again, I'm Jen Pillow White. I'm with Michigan Associates of Acupuncture and Integrative Medicine. Today, hi Jordan. Um, today, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about jaw tension. Um, I, again, as the friendly neighborhood craniosacral therapist, definitely, hi Karen, definitely one of the most uh, common things I see in practice is jaw issues. People will come in and say, oh, I've got TMJ problems. TMJ, you know, having you having a problem or saying that you have TMJ isn't necessarily a term, it's not necessarily the correct term. TMJ is an actual anatomical joint. Um, when you have dysfunction with this, uh, it is TMJD or TMJ dysfunction. Um, I'm seeing a lot of jumping on my screen. I'm not sure if you guys are all seeing that too. Um, hopefully you're not. Um, anyways, so, uh, in regards to practice, I see a tremendous amount. It's probably one of the my mo most common things or mo most common uh, uh, conditions that I see and treat um, with pretty good success. Um, so not only is it common in my practice, um, I also uh, have a personal history with this. What brought me into craniosacral therapy was long, long time ago, I was um, introduced to it by a very dear colleague of mine. And I was always interested in it, not necessarily interested in practicing it, but in regards to receiving it. Video looks good. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Um, but uh, a few years after my introduction to it, I was in a car accident. And uh, after the car accident, I was pretty banged up, but I did recover, for the most part, pretty well with chiropractic care. Um, but what I did end up having was a lingering issue with TMJD or jaw discomfort. Um, and I uh, quickly remembered my uh, influence from Dr. Ken Large years prior with craniosacral therapy in that he was able to do some work that really seemed to relax my jaw. Um, I come from a long line of persons with like clenching kind of uh, behavior with my teeth. I'd have been clenching my teeth for many, many years, not necessarily having a complaint per se, but, um, but noticing I did that. And so when I had seen Dr. Large years prior, I always noticed that my jaw was feeling a lot more relaxed after my sessions with him. So now fast forward, I was having issues, real pain and really a lot of clicking and locking with my jaw after the accident, I went back to him. And after really two or three sessions, the jaw really, you know, cleaned up nicely. I no longer was having the locking, the clicking was next to nothing, um, and the pain was gone. And um, that made me even more interested in craniosacral therapy. And then for, you know, a few years later after that is when I decided to take the plunge and to learn craniosacral therapy and ultimately practice it. So let's talk a little bit um, about what the TMJ is or the temporal mandibular joint is. So we're going to um, have my dear friend Napoleon make a visit again. This is Marie Antoinette over here. Um, but Napoleon's going to help me out today because he's got a really great jaw to show us. Um, so looking here from the side, you know, where um, this mandible, the, we, we commonly will refer as the jaw itself, um, it fits in right over here into a little socket just kind of almost behind or underneath this uh, cheekbone. All right, and so we're gonna take a look at Napoleon's jaw here. Don't do this at home, all right? So here's the mandible itself, all right? So we have the mandible and it comes up and it has this little ball, bulbulous kind of end to it, we call the condyle and, um, and such. So that kind of is in this general vicinity right in here on us. Where it fits into the cranium is this area, like I mentioned, just kind of behind the um, cheek cheekbone here, which is the long red, and kind of behind here, and just a little bit an, um, anterior or forward from your ear canal is the temporal mandibular fossa. So this bone right here, this red, is your temporal bone. All right. So it actually the mandibles condyle here, that bulbulous 
piece right here is going to fit into this little uh, little crevasse, this little um, socket here of sorts um, called the fossa, the temporal mandibular fossa. And so the condyle fits in like so. Now, when you open your jaw, hold on, please stand by. Let's get that back in place. When you open your jaw, really most of that magic is happening. Let's make sure we don't fling Napoleon across the screen here. Most of that work is happening right there at that temporal mandibular fossa. That condyle is kind of rocking forward and backwards. And what's kind of cushioning the condyle as it fits inside the fossa is there is a retro, um, retroarticular disc, a disc that actually creates, or the temporal mandibular disc. That disc is like a, a synovial uh, uh, disc that helps to create a little bit of a cush when you chew or definitely when you're moving your, your mandible. And when the, the mandible is rocking forward or backward in that fossa, that disc is sliding forward and backwards, you know, basically following the motion of that condyle. To, so that way, no matter where your, your jaw is moved or your mandibles moved, that, that uh, disc is there through the whole, the whole journey to create push. So there's no bone on bone action because that would be terrible and bad. Now that's how it's supposed to work. Um, and then what helps to support or kind of put everything together is a ton of muscles. You know, we have our temporal, temporalis muscle and our masseter and our buccinator muscles that help to kind of connect. We have muscles on the floor of our mouth that we're going to talk about in a little bit that help um, engage the, the, the mandible backwards and kind of onto our neck and to the rest other area aspects of our um, cranium. So all of these muscles have to work in unison together to in not only create a tensile strength, you know, to and, and um, some substance to the jaw and keeping the bones together, um, as well as to allow for the power when we go to chew, to talk, to do whatever we're doing with our jaw. Okay, so that's the general, if everything's going according to plan. However, what can sometimes happen is there can be injuries like what I had had when I had my car accident, um, where you have injuries to the jaw or to the neck, definitely in the spine, um, that can create issues. There can be issues that deal with stress response that has a lot uh, to, you know, kind of helps instigate some of these, these uh, the, some jaw dysfunction. There can be issues with the dental alignment where teeth might not match just right. And if that's the case, then the jaw has to constantly work hard to try to find the best, you know, contact available. Um, there could be um, some orthodontal, orthodontia or um, uh, dental trauma or um, um, issues at hand that could also lead to it. And um, as well as, like I said, you know, posture, the way our body's moving. So there, there can be little different things that can happen that can make this very fine joint not function exactly 100% the way it ought to. Um, over time, there can be damage that can happen to the disc. There can be sometimes issues where the disc doesn't really ride with the condyle as it's moving backwards and forwards inside that fossa. Um, sometimes there can be some arthritic pain, there could be inflammation, there could be all sorts of things that ultimately lead to a lot of dis issues. So the most common things that people will describe with temporal mandibular dysfunction is definitely jaw pain, where things, you know, where the, the jaw will lock or it clicks and it crunches. Um, I assure you in almost all cases um, that clicking and crunching your hearing is not bone on bone. It's not. That would not happen um, in, in the average population. What it is, is it's that disc, again, that normally rides and glides. Something is catching the disc and it's kind of not riding or gliding where it should. And then all of a sudden it goes, to get, it finally it catches up and it does this clunk. And then you go to hell, close your mouth again. And then it, it gets caught up on some, the condyle. And then all of a sudden it catches up and then there, there's a clunk. And it's little gases, um, uh, you know, clicks and pops that happen inside the joint. It's not ideal. Definitely not ideal. But I assure you, it's not bone on bone. Um, you, many times people will complain of ear complaints uh, where it's either feeling clogged or it hurts or sometimes they have tinnitus or ear ringing. Um, and that's again because of the proximity of where it is to our ears. Um, it can also um, lead to obviously eating issues, 
breathing issues in regards to the dynamics of our mouth and our jaw when we're sleeping. That's actually something I've been really interested in and learning about and, and um, treating in practice a lot is in regards to uh, jaw um, function in regards to sleep and um, depth of sleep and snoring and all those other issues. Um, let's see, what other kind of issues? Um, again, we, we tend to have a lot of um, headaches that come are associated, associated with TMJ issues or TMJD. So those are some of the symptoms and things like that. And, and I kind of referenced some of the, the reasons for it. One of the things I like to talk with my clients about in regards to TMJD or TMJ issues is that it's not all because of the jaw. There's a few things at hand. First of all, um, the nerve that really does most of the um, magic in regards to uh, mastication or chewing or opening um, is your uh, trigeminal nerve. It's one of your uh, 12 cranial nerves uh, that we kind of we kind of brushed on a little bit a few weeks back. Um, and the uh, sorry, the trigeminal nerve uh, has fibers that go to a lot of the facial muscles and then has fibers going back to the brain kind of doing this, you know, um, influence to the body and from the body back to the brain constantly. And the trigeminal nerve um, fibers will lead to these muscles that um, instigate clenching or instigate mastication, chomping down, okay? Now, where this nerve originally originates is actually part of your brain, because, you know, who doesn't have a brain at home, right? Um, it, it is in your brain stem, all right? So here's the front of your brain, so where your eyes would be. Here's kind of where you rest your head at night. And then just below that, we have our brain stem, which is going to then attach to our spinal cord and our neck. In our brain stem, our brain stem is kind of considered to be our evolutionarily one of the oldest areas of our brain. Um, it is definitely related to the fight or flight um, kind of reflex of actions we talked about a few weeks back. Um, and so the trigeminal nerve is one of the many, many magical nerves that come from this area. And it comes out right side and left side, and it exits right around it exits a few places, but one of them being right here in front of your ears. And it exits out, and then what it does is it goes out to a lot of those muscles of mastication or of chewing that I mentioned. And when they come out, they either go above, below, or through some of these muscles. And they innervate the muscles in telling them to contract. Right? So what will happen with many people is the relationship to stress. When our body is stressed, we have a cascade of actions that happen no matter what. You know, it doesn't matter if it's real stress or perceived stress, psychological stress, you know, real threat stress. It doesn't matter. Our body will fire in this cascade. And again, we referenced this a few weeks ago. All right. One of the things that happens is when the body is stressed, that brainstem it's specifically a part of it called the uh, reticular activating um, or alarm system, the RAS, the RAS will fire and it sends out a cascade of responses. One of the things that's related to is the trigeminal nerve. So when the RAS is firing, or the part of that brainstem is firing, it causes the trigeminal to, to activate and it sends out a response to those um, target, act, target uh, structures to do their magic, which is contract in this example. And so it causes these muscles of our face and our jaw to clench. It's the exact reason why when you feel really stressed, you start to feel like this, right? Well, when you go ahead and have that compression, it puts a lot of stress and strain on the jaw or on the TMJ, no question. But then also the muscles clamp down. And remember, I mentioned how the, the trigeminal nerves come out and they kind of weave themselves through or above or be underneath these muscles. And so let's imagine them weaving through a muscle and then that muscle contracts. What it does is it compresses the nerve fibers. And a lot of these nerve fibers then turn around and send information back to the brain. Well, if, it, if these fibers are contracted and compressing, it's sending feedback to the brain saying, hey man, we're stressed. You might want to keep this RAS or this, um, uh, this stress response going. So then it sends out another firing, and which causes you to uh, clench a little bit more. 
compressing a little bit more and it keeps this process going. So whether or not you are consciously trying to clench or you're just experiencing stress, it is a constant cycle that just keeps feeding and snowballing on itself. And it's one of the reasons why um, jaw tension and clenching, or we call bruxism, which is the clenching or the grinding that we do either at nighttime or daytime, sometimes both, um, why, why it's so hard to get past. Because if you have a stress kind of demeanor, you know, whether you're, you know, creating all these different stressors in your life or you're reacting to these different stressors, or you have poor coping to these stressors, your body keeps reacting to it, leading to more jaw clenching. And again, the more clenching, the harder it is to get past and break that cycle. It can be done, but it is tough, all right? And so doing all the things that we've been talking about, about these days and weeks pr prior to today's set, uh, uh, Facebook Live, it all feeds into the play to help with the jaw to relax, all right? So, <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. A couple of things that you can do. Let's let's see uh, what you can do to help kind of change this cycle. I don't want to say break the cycle, but change the cycle. First of all, I'm a big proponent for um, using mouth guards at night if you already have them. All right, they're not necessarily cheap to have, but if you have them, they're really helpful. Because, and I'm not going to show you mine because they're definitely not gorgeous. All right, I think you know, you might know what I'm talking about already. They look kind of like football guards. They're not the football guards you can get at the store. They're ones that are pro properly made by your dentist. And they're guards that either fit on your upper teeth, your lower teeth, or just like on your front teeth. And they should be smooth. They should not create grooves to where your teeth fit into place, you know? They should just fit and basically create a barrier. And when you do this, it's like you can't get your teeth to fully connect. One of the reasons why that's helpful is when you go to sleep at night, you cannot consciously be thinking about relaxing your jaw, right? You just can't right? You're asleep. So if you're going to clench and grind and try to break a walnut at night, you're not going to be able to be in control. All right. So by having the guard in place, first of all, it protects your teeth because dental fractures are very, very common with persons who have this issue. Um, plus, it also creates a gapping between your teeth, which causes your jaw to kind of slack a little bit. And, you know, and with every, every place, every, you know, millimeter of widening that your mouth has and then you engage these muscles you can't really create the power of contraction as much with the more open your mouth is when your molars are touching you can come down with anywhere between you know i've read anywhere between 100 to 200 pounds of pressure all right that's a lot of pressure down on your teeth but if you're gapping more and more and more, or just connecting with the incisors, like with a trigeminal reeducator, um, the amount of impact that comes down is tremendously less, tremendously. You're still gonna contract, it's still, it's not gonna break the cycle, but it will lessen the wear and tear here and keep your teeth safe. So that's one of my top suggestions. Um, Regarding to relaxation techniques, it's a kind of what I just mentioned with that trigeminal feedback to the RAS or to the brainstem. You know, all different types of relaxation techniques, meditation, acupuncture, exercise, earthing, cranial sacral therapy, any and all of it is extremely helpful. All right, it will all help in the big picture. Um, another one is massage. Now these muscles here, aren't the only ones that can be culprits to our um, to our TMJ. It's a lot of these muscles as well as the muscles in the back of our neck. So I wouldn't normally do this on myself with a glove, but I'm gonna do this for Facebook land. Um, you go in and you actually work on the muscles. Now this is with kindness, no um, masochism, okay? What you do is you take a clean finger or a glove finger going inside the mouth under the inside of the cheek surface. The other hand stays on the outside of the cheek and you go in and you're going to find the muscle or the meaty part of your cheek. All right. You can feel the difference between more of a fatty skin kind of soft tissue versus meat of muscle. You're going to find those and then you're just going to kindly, keyword, kindly massage those muscles all the way around. And um, do not think that just because this feels good, five pounds more pressure is going to be better. You don't want to do that. <clears throat> so you're going to go in 
Go ahead and massage the area. Then you're gonna drop down to the floor of the mouth, kind of between the, the teeth and the root of the tongue. And there is a, another host of muscles that have a lot to play with TMJD. So you wanna look at those muscles. Now those ones you're not gonna massage and dig around, all right? That's gonna be a little bit different, okay? So first of all, let me show you a little bit about the cheek. The cheek, you're going inside, uh, right angle, fingers on the outside, and you just massage, okay? Not the most glamorous Facebook Live. Okay, you do that. Maybe take a minute or two to do that and really get into the little areas of where the you know tender spots might be. When you come into the floor of the mouth, I always say, think of it as a cold stick of butter and a warm finger. You're gonna place your finger on the floor of the mouth, kind of going all the way back to the molar area. Your other fingers are on the outside and you're going to glide slowly on the floor of the mouth, ultimately making it towards the front of the mouth. When you find a tender spot, keep your finger in place. Do not push down, okay? You should feel that it's, imagine if you have a cold stick of butter and a warm finger, if you keep your finger on top of that cold stick of butter, after a minute, you know, after a few seconds or a minute, it starts to melt. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna melt into the muscles of the floor of the mouth. This is in a very tender area. Many people never even have this area addressed unless they come see what a friendly neighborhood craniosacral therapist. All right, so you go in and you sink. All right, I lock. All right, and then you wake your way forward. Take your time with this one. This one is, can be really tender on many and most of us. And then you go over to the other side, all right? And then the other side. Um, and then massaging the base of your neck and, and, and you know, neck and uh, skull and shoulders, you know, or having your loved one who's also stay at home with you to do that for you. Um, that could be really, really helpful. Heat, moist heat, keyword, moist heat um, in, in regards to tension can be really helpful either to the jaw or to the neck and shoulders. If it really feels like it's in bad shape and you're really hurting, ice pack for about five minutes, heat for about five minutes, ice, you know, ice, heat, ice, heat. You kind of do this little, you know, alternating thing, five minutes. Moist heat is the best, whether it being a warm shower, bean bag, whatever you might have. Doing a grandma's old fashioned, you know, electric heating pad is not gonna really make the big difference here. So those would be my suggestions. Um, uh, definitely um, uh, trying to get your jaw to be slack because many of us who have these concerns will notice as the day progresses, we'll notice that if we tune into ourselves, we're, you know, especially if we're concentrating on something, we're clenching. So if you, as you tune into yourself periodically throughout the day and you find yourself do that, kind of be slack jaw. You know, we generally don't want to look like this in life, but if it can give us an opportunity to get this jaw to relax, that's ideal. Um, and then that leads me to one of my craniosacral techniques that I have my clients do. This is a technique that I do almost all the time with my clients. Um, it's a temporomandibular decompression, all right, where you're basically going to take the mandible and try to decompress it away from the fossa. Now, if you've already received craniosacral therapy, you realize my touch is not heavy. It's extraordinarily light. Um, it's kind of going underneath your body's defenses or, you know, and kind of being um, sliding in, being undetected sort of a, a touch that you feel. So, and that's what you're going to do too. So what you want is you're going to be sitting, um, sitting down, you're going to get your fingers just past, you know, past the bony aspect of your mandible. I'm going to turn the right angle here. All right. So if you feel here, here's bone, slide up a little bit. All right. Now you're right on the edge of the bone basically this ass i'm sorry to get the right in here just like this aspect of the jaw all right then what i say is you pretend you have spider-man fingers you know he's got those little sticky fingers that help him climb up the walls that's what we are going to pretend our fingers to be like we are not going to sink into and drag on this maneuver what we want is we want our fingers to kind of melt and stick to the skin the dry skin and dry fingers, we want to get them to stick. And as they stick, what once you feel like you really stick, you feel like you could really pull this or 
direct this jaw in a decompression. So as you attach your fingers and you get your, your Spider-Man fingers in place, you want to get your jaw to go slack. And then you're going to start taking with your fingers the jaw down in a straight direction to the floor. All right. And you're going to take this for five minutes because it really, if you're doing it light enough, it's going to take a little bit of time. If you do it too heavy, you're going to slide off. All right. All right. So we want to go and we want to go ahead and decompress this area slowly but gently. Jaw is slack. And you can really feel the release if you take your time with it, doing that multiple times of the day. Really, really helpful. Um, let's see here. Posture. Posture is a huge thing. Many times, again, people think of, uh, of TMJ issues as being only jaw. It is very much related to your spinal posture. So let's do an experiment. Let's go ahead and slouch in our chair. All right. Really slouch, like exaggerated even. And when you do that, go ahead and put your teeth together. Appreciate how your teeth are touching. All right. Now, sit up straight, just like, you know, Sister Mary told you to do in, in, in uh, elementary school. Sit up nice and straight, heads back, shoulders are back. You know, you're really sitting on your tail. Touch your teeth together. Do they touch, do they feel different? I'm willing to bet that they do. All right. That tells you right there that just the way of our body's position has a lot to do on how this mandible fits inside that fossa, all right? So one of the things we wanna do is we wanna focus on our own posture in trying to getting our shoulders to pull back as many and most of us have a rounded shoulder posture, pulling our shoulder back, um, doing different stretches to kind of stretch the pecs, you know, uh, and such. Um, doing some awareness to bring our necks back. Many of us have really significant forward head postures. And every, every millimeter forward of our head to, from our shoulders increases the poundage of our, man, of, our, of our cranium on our neck and definitely the positioning of our jaw inside that fossa. So pulling that back, pulling this back, and definitely even with our pelvis. Many times we tend to have our a, a pelvis where, you know, we have our derriere kind of popped up behind us and our, our pelvis is kind of rotated forward. What you want to do is you want to have an awareness where you're pulling your pelvis backwards and you're pointing your tailbone down to the floor. It kind of is a flattening out of the, the back of the spine. It helps pull you all back. And the more awareness you have into that posture, the less strain there is here on your jaw. I work many, many, many long days at the office and I sit at a table with my clients for hours and I too am just human. And what will happen many times is I start to do this and I'm really into my work and I'm slumped forward, unfortunately. And then I'll start noticing, wow, my jaw's kind of tight. Well, duh, it's because I'm doing this. Just the sheer act of getting myself to sit up straight in my, 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 my exam chair the jaw feels better instantly. So that is really a big, big piece. As well as in regards to our feet and our ankles, many of us pronate where our arches roll in or we um, you know, have more of a towing in or you know, inversion or eversion kind of situation or we have weak ankles, we have foot complaints, whatever it is. Good athletic shoes have a lot to piece to play with the jaw or orthotics if necessary. Really big piece to play with that. Because again, our feet and our ankles are our foundation of our body. If I'm telling you your spine has a, all the piece to play with your jaw, then why wouldn't your feet and ankles, right? So by making sure that you're wearing shoes that are not worn, you know, overworn out, um, having orthotics that are properly fitted for you, wearing good athletic shoes and getting your arches up strong and getting your ankles equal and um, aligned helps your whole foundation of your rest of your spine to be straight and narrow and getting your jaw pulled back. Um, and then lastly, um, what I would recommend is doing, if you have a cervical pillow at home, that is a really big piece because the way we sleep at night has a lot to do with our jaw. You know, if uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm slow, I'm a reformed stomach sleeper for the most part. Um, pregnancy did that to me, uh, changed my ways, but I would sleep like this 
that puts pressure on my jaw for five to eight hours every night. So, um, and then sleeping on my side and not having enough neck support, I would have my head dipping and that would not be good. So that puts a lot of tension here. So really having a good cervical pillow that feels good to you is an ideal thing. Can't get that from Amazon right now. What you can do is just a regular bath towel and these can be modified the way you want it. So if you're a back sleeper, this is rarely where it comes into play. You take a towel and you roll it up depending on the arch of your neck. The magic of a cervical pillow is that it's supporting your neck, not so much your head. Many of us sleep with pillows that are too high and that's kind of cranking us forward, or we, in some cases, where it's rarely that it's too low, but it's usually too much. Um, by having a, a towel that you can roll up and then put behind you at night under your neck and you lay back on it, it supports your neck, allowing your neck to relax, allowing your jaw to relax, and, over, and allowing your shoulders to relax. Over time, it really will help create wonders for your neck. Um, it also helps stretch your neck. If you want to be a little more boisterous, you know, you know, for a few minutes before going to sleep, really rolling up the neck, <clears throat> the towel a little bit more, putting it behind your neck and laying down on it, it stretches it even more. Don't, you know, less is more in this in this world. You know, don't put too much of a roll to overstretch it. It may feel good, but over a long pe period of time of a night, it may be too much. Working your way up would be helpful. But by stretching that and giving yourself a chance to get those shoulders to drop if your stomach, if you're, I'm sorry, back sleeping and getting your neck to relax will really, really help. Also, if you sleep or more side sleeping, have your partner check you and make sure that you have enough pillows kind of, you know, put underneath your ear at night so that when you're sleeping, you're parallel to the bed. All right. And not doing this sleeping like this or like this. All right. So you want to make sure you have enough pillows to support your neck again. Good neck posture leads to better neck, jaw health. All right, I think that's gonna cover my options that I have for you for today for your jaw. Um, your jaw is a huge thing. It is constantly working for us. Many of us talk a lot, all right? Um, but it is a very um, easy thing for us to be able to try to put some practices at home to help with it. Um, when things finally settle, I am going to be there for you. If you got jaw concerns, you know, definitely through this, this stressful time, I'm going to be there. I'm happy to help. And I'm, I miss you so much. And I can't wait to be able to see you in the office. So, you know, as a reminder, you know, we have our telehealth. If you need to reach out to us, we are there. You can find us. Um, we are um, um, around. So please give us a call at the office if you need to talk to us or have questions or concerns. And the number is 248 seven three seven seven one two six we're hoping to be getting in the office very soon we're compiling all of our plans right now in regards to reopening whenever that might be i assure you we're going to have everything um in line with cdc and then beyond um you know making sure that you know you're safe we're safe we're all safe and we can be um at peace in our peaceful office so i look forward to seeing you and i hope you enjoy this beautiful day and oh, relax that jaw. Be great, guys.